Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and as you can see, I've got the new MacBook Pro 16 with me. Firstly though, apologies for the hotel room backdrop, I'm traveling at the moment, uh, but I didn't want to waste any time in bringing you a first impressions and hands-on and a bit of an overview of the new laptop, because you can buy these right now, and so if you've got your finger hovering over the buy button, which starts at £2,400 for this, uh, I've got the slightly higher spec one here for £2,800, it's an awful lot of money. And so while I am still working on my full review, as well as some comparisons, including with my Dell XPS 15, which uh, you guys probably know is my main workhorse laptop at the moment, I am actually very tempted to switch to this. But for now, let me run you through what's new and give you some of my first impressions. And obviously the first thing, the big thing, it says on the tin, 16 inch screen. So they've shrunk the bezels a little bit. So with the bigger screen, they've slightly increased the resolution to keep near enough uh, the same PPI for their retina screen. So this still isn't a 4K display, which we'll talk about in a second, but obviously that does mean you can't watch YouTube or your uh, video edits back natively in 4K. Although on the plus side, it's 500 nits of brightness, has the P3 color gamut. It's a stunning laptop display. Although I have to say, uh, currently using my OLED XPS 15, when I'm watching stuff on here, I can still see uh, the gray bars, you know, letterboxing uh, rather than the black on the OLED. So kind of like the iPad as well. I actually can't wait to see uh, Apple maybe put OLED screens in here, but perhaps that's something we'll see next year. I do love the fact though that it's a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, same as uh, before. So it's a little bit taller. And actually it is quite a big laptop. I was uh, doing some editing on the train yesterday and it did feel a bit like uh, everyone was looking at me as I got out this huge screen. It's almost like um, when you see people with the uh, iPad Pro, the larger one, the uh, 13 inch one, you get a few looks because it's uh, there's a lot of screen there, but it is undoubtedly beautiful. Color accurate, as I say, 500 nits, still retina, which uh, Apple say basically means that it's as sharp as your eyes can see from a, a normal reasonable use distance. So bigger screen, but also bigger laptop. I mean, that kind of makes sense, I guess. It's about 2% bigger on the X and Y, but in a very un-Apple move, they've also made this thicker and heavier than before. It's not an awful lot. To be honest, you'd really struggle to see that difference in real life, but the benefit is they've managed to fit in a bigger battery, a 100 watt hour battery, uh, which is actually the limit that you can take this on a plane with. The FAA regulations don't allow a bigger one, so they've gone right out to the limit there and actually increased battery life, which we'll come to in a second. But the bigger upgrade really in terms of that thickness is that they've improved the cooling, the thermals, because while thin and light is all well and good, if you actually want to get Get some work done, some editing, and say you want to upgrade to the i9 processor with eight cores and up to a five gigahertz boost clock speed, then previously uh, there were some throttling issues on the Mac. Now a software update did improve things, but you just can't get around the laws of physics sometimes and heat dissipation. So this is something I'll be properly testing in my full review, but Apple say they have significantly improved the airflow, the fans, the cooling. So actually, you should be less worried now about going for that i9 option, which um, is kind of like a weird side upgrade because while the processors in here are the same as before, the same 9th gen H series of chips because there actually aren't newer ones out yet, we'll probably see those early next year, the better cooling should mean that we get higher average clock speeds. It uh, can run faster for longer before it has to throttle down to cool down. So in a way, you will get a performance upgrade that way, even though the processor chips are the same. Although uh, looking at some other reviews, including uh, Jonathan Morrison's video, it seems that the CPU boost really isn't that significant, but the GPU, the graphics is. So I've got the slightly more expensive model here with the new AMD 5500M. Uh, the base 2400 pound version comes with the 5300M uh, and that's based on AMD's new Navi architecture. So coming from uh, the Vega of the previous one, this actually is quite a significant upgrade. So that's something I'll be properly testing in my full review. Apple are actually claiming we'll get 11 hours from this, which is an hour more than uh, before, as well as the fact that we have a bigger screen and more powerful graphics. So that's sort of a three-way boost in battery performance, which is pretty impressive. So far, so good then, but the two biggest upgrades, my two favorite upgrades are with the keyboard and the speakers. And actually it makes such a difference. Let's start with the keyboard. So what they've done is taken the magic keyboard that you get with the iMac, which I think we can all agree is actually very, very good. Taken that, made some improvements based on what they've learned with the butterfly mechanism, but still stuck to that original scissor mechanism. And now we get a kind of hybrid, a sort of best of both worlds. And I have to say it is a lot nicer than the previous MacBook Pro's uh, butterfly keyboards. We'll have to see about durability. Fingers crossed that uh, a grain of sand no longer breaks it. It sounds less annoying. It feels good. The keys are nice and stable. It's like the best bits of butterfly 
on uh, the scissor mechanism and so I'm actually really really happy with this and genuinely a good reason to upgrade. We can talk about specs and design and screens all day long but it's the trackpad and the keyboard that you're using constantly so um, that being much better is a significant upgrade in my eyes. So as well as improving the mechanism they've also given us back a dedicated escape key which I know a lot of developers were asking for and finally the speakers. They're incredible. They are the best speakers on any laptop. No competition. So we get a six speaker setup which are Dolby Amos tuned so when you're watching movies or Netflix shows you do get some really good sound separation. And also Apple are using new force reduction woofers which helps cancel out some of the vibration which means even at higher volumes there's very little distortion. They are without question the best speakers on any laptop. So to recap we've got the bigger screen, the slightly bigger design which means there's room for the improved thermals and cooling. The bigger battery giving us an extra hour of life, the upgraded AMD graphics cards, they finally fixed the keyboard, and they've added some incredible speakers. And while it's still pretty eye-wateringly expensive starting at £2400, it's actually the same price as the previous model. And if you have really deep pockets you can spec it with up to 64 gigs of RAM, 8 terabytes of storage, plus you have the option of going for a 5500M graphics card with 8 gigs of VRAM. So overall some quite significant upgrades in my opinion and I can't wait to test this properly in my full review so make sure you do stay tuned for that but in the meantime let me know what you think of the new MacBook Pro 16. Do you think Apple have done enough and would you be tempted to upgrade? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.